Hello everyone, welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name's Dave Kay and I hope you're all well and it's so good to have you back and it's great to be able to make in videos again. It's been a while since I've made a video just simply because if we've been absolutely mowed under with work it's been absolutely crackers. So, uh, but now I've got a little bit of time, we've got a lovely job to do today and you might notice that I am holding a lovely Invisiframe kit and this kit is to go on this beautiful Specialised Levo in cobalt blue. So this has come direct from Specialised in the box, this is how it's come out of the box, all covered in bubble wrap. So I thought it'd be a good thing to, uh, to do this video so we could unwrap it. There's nothing better than a brand new bike, a new bike day. How good day is that? So we're going to unwrap it, we'll put it in stand, we'll unwrap it. So let's crack on. So we've managed to get this covering off, it took a bit of doing to be honest, it were well wrapped. So the first thing that I need to do is obviously just check, make sure there's no marks on there, any transit marks or anything like that. But being an independent, being an independent bike mechanic, I have to say that I do like, um, I do like Specialized Levos. Um, I think they're a super bike. They're really, really well made. Uh, and they're built as an e-bike from the ground up. It's not a, a, a bike that's been converted into an e-bike, if you know what I mean. It's a bike that's been designed from the ground up to be an e-bike. And everything is so good on this bike. The components are really, really good. It is good quality. The bolts are nice and uh, hard and well finished off. You can tell, can't you, uh, when you're holding different parts from a bike, what sort of quality they've got. But this one is brilliant. This is a super bike. I really like these bikes. So we'll just get rid of this, get rid of this bubble wrap. Right? And we'll throw it over there, which will annoy the hell out of my son. Who will come in and they'll say, what the hell's all this doing here? Okay, we'll just take this covering off here. And we'll have a good look at it. Now there's a little bit of... This, I'm going to put my teeth in. There's a little bit of protection on these edges here. But I have to say, it's not been well, well applied. There's some air bubbles in there. Now the last uh, uh, video that I did about Invisiframe were on an orange um, and we covered off uh, the simple parts really or, or uh, a simple top tube if I remember rightly. So what I'm going to do with this video is we're going to do the whole bike um, but obviously because it's going to take so long to do I'm not going to video the whole bike I'll just do portions of it. Um, so you don't have to sit and endure uh, me rabbling on for a good two hours. Um, so we'll put it all together and when we've done that you'll see it all done uh, but just obviously parts of it. So the kit that we need uh, we've bought already like I said it's here. Um, I need to mention that the temperature where you can actually go ahead and put this Invisiframe on your bike needs to be over 18 degrees, 18 and a half degrees. Um, just pick, just purely and simply because the kit adheres better to during you know at that temperature. It's also important that you've got your your squeegee bottle as well or your spray bottle with the right amount of water in there. And uh, we use uh, Baby Johnson shampoo. Um, I think there's about 800 mils of warm water to five mils of Johnson Baby shampoo. Uh, you can use a little bit more, but the instructions, uh, what ratios to, to do it, are in the instructions that you get with your Invisiframe kit. So it is fairly straightforward, it's easier to do. The main thing that you need to do is have a clear workspace, okay? You don't want loads of stuff lying around your workshop, otherwise it's just going to get in the way and you can end up catching what you've done already. So it's the main thing is the space that we need to lay your kit out on the bench and get everything that you need or uh, all next year. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll take the kit out of the uh, the tube, we'll lay it out on the bench, and we'll have a look at what parts we've got. So here's this kit. Let's take it out of the tube. 
see what we've got in there. One squeegee. The kit, which we'll roll out. And we'll roll it out uh, of the right side that we're gonna actually take the pieces off from. So we actually pull them off from this side, which is the right way around. And then the other thing that we need out of here is the diagram, okay? Now this particular diagram outlines all the pieces that's actually in this kit and they're labeled as well. So it makes it easier for you to identify which piece goes where. I don't know whether you can see that, but that one there, you can see it says right chain stay. So we know that if we go back to his bike, that piece there is gonna fit perfectly on his right chain stay. So I always keep that to one side and I put it the right way around in the same uh, the same kind of direction as what I've got my sheet. So this particular piece at the end there, which is a top tube, I make sure that that is in the same direction as what my sheet is. So now that we've got that on us bench, we've got us, um, we've got us instructions. We need to have a look at which bat of the frame that we're gonna do first. Now, I, I always start on the rear seat stay. Okay, so let's look at that first. Okay, so here's his uh, rear right hand seat stay. It does help if we take the wheels out as well because it makes it much easier to apply uh, the kit. So we'll just drop them gears down. That's it. Okay, so I've taken both wheels out front and the back. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier and then we can get to this inside uh, both chain stairs and seat stairs okay now i said earlier that there's some little bits of protection on here which we need to take off first now it's important that uh, when you take this stuff off then you actually pull it up at 90 degrees from the surface that it's stuck on so a lot of people are actually tempted to fold it back over itself and pull it back but this stuff comes off better when you pull it straight up because then it doesn't leave adhesive on the frame if it if you've got adhesive on the frame then it does take quite a lot of getting off we use a specific solution for getting adhesive stuff off frames now if you're ever finding yourself with bits of adhesive or old stickers on your frame now this is the stuff to use to get it off. It's brilliant stuff. It's not cheap, but it works really, really well. Um, sticky stuff remover it's called. Halfords, unfortunately. But there you go. Um, so we'll just pull in these bits of um, old or rather new um, protection. We're just pulling them straight up and off and that way we're not leaving any mess on the frame. Uh, we'll leave this side because it's important that we just concentrate on one piece of the frame at a time. That way we're not transferring any muck or grease um, over from one piece to another. Yeah, what we need is some uh, really dry, nice and clean cotton cloth, lint free, but also we need some auto glim tar remover. Now this is the best stuff to use to prepare your frame before you apply your Invisi-Frame. It makes it really clean, it gets any kind of contaminants off there and it's great to use. So this is the stuff that we only, the, we only use this stuff. So, get some cloth. Now I get two, I, what I do is I get one big piece uh, and then I cut it in half because I use one to apply and one to wipe off okay i keep them both separate uh, but it, oh, the, the other thing that's important is to make sure your hands are clean give your hands a good clean and a wash first make sure you've not got any uh, oil or contaminants on your hands okay so we'll get the tar remover we'll just gently bunch this cloth up okay a little bit of tar remover. don't need too much okay and we give it a really good clean all over the, just this one piece because this is the only piece that we're working on for now okay give it a really good clean and if you look at your cloth 
when you've finished, you'll see, you can see the, the muck on there. It's not too much, but nevertheless, it's discoloured and that was on your frame. So now that I've put it on, I need to just gently wipe it off, okay? Okay, so we need to identify the piece that we need on as kit. Get your spray bottle. Now you've, you've no need to be frightened of putting too much on, okay? Put loads and loads on so it's dripping, but also put it on your hands as well, okay? Make sure your hands are covered in it, okay? And then the piece that you need, just take it off the um, the sheet okay so we've got a piece I'm going to spray the back of it get it nice and wet okay and then what we're going to do is we're just going to lay this piece on the frame now you can't actually mistake where it's going to go because the shape uh, of the piece will fit providing that you've got the right size kit will sit nicely on the on the frame that you're applying it to. So what we need to do is just bob that on there, nice and even, and because it's wet, it will slide about and you can position it right. Okay, once we've got it in the right position, then we can take a squeegee, and we can just rub it really gently. And what we're doing is we're just forcing the water that we've actually sprayed on out of the of the Invisiframe of the protection okay now the main thing with this is not to try and do it all at the same time okay because you can afford to come back to it and leave these edges okay until they dry out a little bit more okay so the main thing is just get that front piece on first Okay, get all the air bubbles out of that piece. If you notice, I've left the piece on the back flapping around. We can put some more water on the back, okay, if we need to at a later date when we've when we've uh, when we come back to it, okay. But we'll leave them pieces loose, just like that, okay. Now what I'll do is because there's such a lot of uh, Invisiframe pieces to go on this particular bike for the length of the video uh, I'm just going to do a little bit at a time uh, like I said earlier so what I'll do is I'll leave this for now I'll do a little bit more at bike and then come back in a little bit okay so I've actually done the two seat stays at the back and I've done the two chain stays at the back as well now the, the I've left the loose ends just hang in there. I'll take the camera around and show you where I've left it in a second. But now that we moved on, I thought I'd actually video this top tube, okay? And then uh, you can see how that's done. So we'll give it a clean with this tar remover. Get all that, any kind of contaminants, any little bit of oil on there. We're going to get that off, okay? Nice, make it nice and nice and clean. For us protection kit, get all under the edges, everywhere where your kit's going to go, okay? And then I'll get my clean cloth, give that a wipe, get rid of that, okay? And then I'll take my, take my sprayer and I'll spray loads and loads of water on it. You're probably thinking, why does he need so much water? Well don't worry about it because you can't put too much water on and i'll show you why so we'll take us piece off as sheet that we need i'll spray that with water as well as well as my hands you can see that's actually dripping with water okay so you can see from this which side this is actually going which end they're going to go on obviously you can see the on and off switch there so this bit here is obviously going to go on there. So we'll just lay it on as simple as that. Okay. There's a little notch in the black in the back, which donates the center of the piece. There's a little notch in the front, which donates the center of the front. 
So you need to obviously make sure you get that the center of your switch if it's a specialized that you're doing. Okay, and you need to get that in the position that you're happy with that you think, oh, that's all right, that's not bad. That's where it needs to go. So once that's there, get your squeegee and work from the back, across the top, down the sides. You don't need to put loads and loads of pressure on. All you're trying to do is you're trying to get those that water out underneath. Now, I've just seen a really tiny speck, something that's obviously got under there. I don't know how. But if you notice that earlier on, it's really easy to sort out. You just lift it, okay? And then you can see where that little bit is. Looks like It looks like it could be a, lilac, a tiny little bit of imperfection in the paint. Okay. Okay, all right, I'll put some more water on. <coughs> and then we'll just drop that piece back over there. And you can see it's exactly in the same position as it was before. We'll just work across, getting all that water and bubbles out. And if you find that if you find that you've obviously got little bubbles in there that you've missed, uh, then at this stage, you could actually take this, this off again. You just lift it off and you could put it back on again. But you need, the key is water, okay? Now also, what you might find useful <coughs> is if I accidentally drop this piece on the floor, Naturally, it's going to get covered in uh, loads of bits of crap and stuff. So if that happens to you, take it off, take it in your house, fill your washing up bowl full of warm water and drop it in there and just get all the rubbish off the back. Give it a good spray and it'll be as good as new. That's providing that you haven't... You see, the more... The more I rub this, the more water I get out, the more it's going to actually stick to the frame. Okay? So you really, as, as you go along, you need to make sure that it's definitely in the right position where you want it. And you just work those bubbles out, working your way around. Doing the top first, and then you can move round to the edges, but do one edge at a time, okay? So now I'm going to have a look at this edge here, uh, okay? That you can see, obviously, this edge is mirrored from that edge, so you can see how much um, how much uh, Invisiframe there is to actually wrap under there. So, okay. Working his way around from the front to the back, getting all those bubbles out. Take your time. That's the thing, there's no rushing. The more time you take, the easier it is for you to do. Okay, that flap around that other side, just tuck that under. Okay, see there's some air bubbles there over the top, I'll just wipe them down. Get them out over the edge. Okay. And you can see what the process is. Just nice and steady, slow. And you will get all those bubbles out. Okay. I'll go around and do the other side. Then I'll come back to you when it's done. You can see these edges that are loose on the back. Okay, they need to be left until it's actually dry. This we can just finger those down. Same with that there underneath. You might be able to see that. Okay, that needs to be left until it's it goes fairly dry. You can always put some more water under there just to kind of manipulate it a little bit. Uh, but generally speaking, 
that's the top piece done you can you can hardly tell that it's actually on those edges will, as it dries those edges will be to finger down okay now you can do this at home uh, it's not that difficult to do. I mean, obviously, I do it all the time, and so it, 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 I feel, you know, I find it quite easy to do. In fact, I love doing it. It's very therapeutic, therapeutic even. And the Invisiframe kits are so good; they go together so well um, that they're a joy to do. Um, but you can have a go at home. Take your time. It's easy enough to do. Um, what I'll do is I'll do some more bits and bats. And then I'll come back to you when we've got this really big piece to do under here. Um, and then we'll do that together. So see you in a bit. I'm quite fortunate that I've got a really nice bike stand. And I can manipulate bikes where I want them to be. So I've actually, this is in the stand, but it's actually upside down now. So this is the biggest, in this particular kit for the Levo, this is the biggest piece uh, to go on your bike is this bit underneath, okay? Um, now it is a big it is a big piece as you can probably see there. It's very wide, very big, and it's important that you actually soak it with water, okay? Because if you don't, and these edges stick together, you'll struggle to get them apart. So again, we've cleaned the bike. Okay, we've cleaned the bike with the tire remover, uh, and we've got again we've got a little notch on the top. And a little notch on the bottom so all we basically do it's quite obvious where this goes okay it don't matter if it goes and sticks together because we've soaked it with water and we can mess about with this as long as we've got loads of water on there we can mess about with this as long as we like so what I've basically done with this I've actually put the head tube on uh, at the top and I've put the two upper piece up sorry upper I put the two upper pieces on one either side, so that helps us gauge where this top's going actually going to finish, because it needs to be fairly close with these top pieces, and we need to double check on the other side to make sure it's more or less the same gap. So what I'll do is I'll just manipulate that till I get to where I want it to go. Okay. Double check the bottom to make sure that it's actually in the centre with that notch. Okay. And these are centred as well. Okay, we don't want this to overlap either side. Okay, so, we, so I'm just making sure that these gaps are the same from these two side pieces as opposed to the middle piece. Uh, and we've got it where we want it to go. We've tons of water on there. This is a big piece, so we need to be careful how we do it. Okay, we start do small, small sections at a time, brushing the water, scraping the water off to the sides with a squeegee till it runs off the end, off the sides, over the sides of the frame and down where it's loose. Okay. And we just work as way down until all that water out of that bottom piece has gone. And you can see that there's no bubbles in there now, or there won't be when I've finished. Okay, squeegeeing those little bubbles out, these bits of water underneath. Okay, making sure that there's no wrinkles. And as you can see, that's starting to look really, really nice. Okay, but again, you can see how slow I'm going. I'm not rushing. Okay, I'm just taking my time. Okay, these little edges, they're sticking up. It's fine. Don't worry about them. You don't need to think, oh, they're lifting, they're lifting. I need to get them down. Just leave them until it dries a bit more. And then you can come back to it. And if it's dry enough, they'll, they'll, you can do it with your hand. Okay, squeegee all those out. And then what we need to do is we need to work down the sides. So we'll work down this side first. Because this is nearest. And we're just getting all that water out from underneath to the other bit at the, at the bottom. So it's running out now. You can see there's loads of water running out of it which is exactly what we want. 
okay there's nothing worse than bubbles down this particular side these sides they look horrible so you need to be very careful how you actually get that on there and take your time okay now I'll finish this off and then I'll come back So by the marvellous, wondrous Dave K's video editing, we've got a three an hour, three hour, four hour job down to like 20 minutes. Amazing. Um, there's a few things that you need to be aware of. The bottle cage is one of them. On this aluminium model, the bottle cage is, is fashioned, fashioned, fastened straight through the frame into like a plastic bolt. I'll put a picture of it um, on the video now for you to have a look. Um, this plastic uh, strip tines, tends to deform, okay, so if you take the bolts out, be very careful because you will struggle to get them back in. Um, I would suggest just taking one bolt out at a time and then put another bolt in before you take the other one out, just to make sure to keep that straight, because they are very, it's very difficult to get back in. Um, apart from that, it's fairly straightforward. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please take care and we'll see you next time. Doodle pip.